So you're watching this video because you want to know more about the injection port or because you're forced to watch the video to do good on the assignments, one or the other. All right, so here is a picture of the Metrome's ion chromatograph injection port. Again, this injection port is very similar to other liquid chromatographs that you might see in a laboratory, not just with IC, but also with HPLC and some of the other chromatographs that will come around. Uh, so um, here we're going to take a little bit of closer look at the injector port, uh, but right here in the center is where you're going to see the injector. Uh, so you're seeing the loop right here in front. The loop has this tag on it. And I think, if I'm not mistaken, that probably says 10 microliters in total. So this is a pretty small loop. 20 to 100 is typically the average volume that we see. But of course, we can go smaller and we can go bigger. Uh, but 20 to 100 is the most common. So it looks like the injector port is here. And we have six ports. One, two, three, four, five, and six. So a six port injection valve and two of those ports are going to be used up by our loop so there's my first one and there's my second one the other two on top and the other two on bottom we kind of know why those are present now we know that those will reroute the mobile phases and they will reroute my sample that's coming into the machine and out of the machine uh, and it kind of helps control the flow paths that happen so I'm going to click on this link that says cleaning the valve because there are things that we're going to have to do as far as the valve's concerned to make sure that that stays clean and it stays working. Uh, this is taking sample. It's taking mobile phase. This can be gunked up just like all the other pieces and parts of the machine. And what you're seeing is that all of the tubing is already disconnected. So the loop would typically be here to the left port and the right port. So that has been removed. It's been taken off. You just unscrew the screws, and you just pop them out of there. There's also the tubing lines that go from the top and from the bottom, and those tubing lines have also been removed at this point. So those are still in the instrument somewhere, but they've just been shifted out of the way, so that way we have better access to the injector port or the injector system itself. Okay. So what you're going to see in this video is that they're going to use a hex wrench uh, or an Allen wrench, I don't know why I always call them an Allen wrench, but a hex wrench. And you're going to unloosen those hex screws, and you're going to remove that injector out of the instrument. And you're going to put it probably into some cleaning solvent. That piece can also be removed out of there. It just helps kind of stabilize the instrument. Might as well clean that piece too. Uh, all of those pieces go down into a beaker. That beaker is filled with methanol. Uh, maybe isopropyl alcohol, maybe a little bit of water is mixed into the pitcher too. And you just kind of sonicate it, and you can sonicate it for 10 to 30 minutes, maybe an hour, who knows. Uh, but that will help kind of clean and vibrate all of the junk that might be present on that injector. Uh, so that's as easy as it is, folks. You just unscrew two screws, pop it off, put it into a beaker, put it in a sonicator, and away you go. So keep the system clean, and the system will hold out for you for a very long period of time. We've had ours for 10 years, no big major issues with it at all, and that's because we keep our systems cleaned and maintained. And it's as easy as that, okay? Another way that we can keep them clean are these inline filters. Uh, here's an inline filter. Uh, this piece basically has a small membrane filter on the inside of it. Think about those syringe filters that you've been using. Uh, these kind of have the same thing. It just helps prevent some of that buildup, sludge, large particle stuff from entering into the system and really taking control. Uh, if I want to replace the inline filter, I can. Uh, typically, you're going to see them kind of right before the major pump and around the injector area is where they're going to be located. And it's going to be this kind of longer piece up here at the top that you're going to see this person gravitate toward and kind of unscrew and do some maintenance on. Uh, so they're going to unscrew the eluent flow path from one side. Uh, so that's what they're doing now. And then they're going to unscrew the eluent flow path from the other side. 
and that piece in the middle is going to be the filter and that filter can be unscrewed because it's actually two pieces so that's what you're seeing here with the wrench kind of clamp it down on one end take another wrench kind of loosen it up that will break apart the two pieces because they kind of just screw in together really it's got to be a pretty tight seal though remember that that's another area that leaks can occur and you're going to see these two pieces kind of come apart. On the inside of this piece, there's going to be a filter. And that's that little white piece of filter that you're seeing right there. That needs to be removed. Pretty easy to pop out. You're seeing they're using a pair of tweezers. They're just grabbing it and they're just kind of popping it out of there. Uh, normally, those should be white. Uh, and you know it's time to change them if they're yellow or dingy or beige. So a new filter just gets out of the bag. A new one just kind of pops into that same area. Normally, I'll use a little bit of methanol at this point, and I'll just kind of wet that piece of filter just kind of to seat it into that area, and then I'll screw the new piece back on. I don't really leave it dry like that person does, but I at least wet it so that way it stays in place. So the two pieces just screw back together, and then, of course, you need to tighten it a little bit more because you don't want leaks to show up at that part of the system. So that's what they're doing, just a quarter-inch turn. Make sure it's super tight to make sure that no leaks are going to happen at that joint. Then they just take that piece, connect it to the eluent flow lines all over again, and now you're pretty much done. So another consumable Again, it's to keep everything clean, to keep the system working the proper way. Notice that's the major theme now, right? I've talked about the mobile face filters to keep the system clean. I've talked about the pump and taking those pieces off to keep the system clean. I've talked about taking the injector off, rinsing everything out to keep the system clean. And now we're looking at inline filters that can be taken off and replaced to keep the system clean. That is always the general consensus with ion chromatography and really with liquid chromatography as a whole. So this is the first time that you're seeing it, which is why I'm spending a little bit more time on it. All of these pieces and parts stay true to all of the liquid side of the house. We really didn't have to deal with this with gas chromatography, right? And that's because the mobile phase was helium. The components that we were injecting was gas. They were not liquids. So liquid chromatography side of the house, a little bit more high maintenance. There's a little bit more consumable that is involved. And you just got to be ready to handle that situation when you go in and begin doing maintenance on these pieces of equipment.